reason why all the trap the saw set for David. The reason why he could not fall into them was because the young man was a man of character. Your character, all behavior of your today is the prophecy of your tomorrow. That is character is the prophecy of a mass future. Beauty makes people to be attracted to you. But character determines if they will stay with you or they will walk out of you. When you are a person of good character, in the midst of the multitude, you are separated. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name. So as you wake up in the money, you draw strength from his presence. Don't step out. Where are you rushing to business? One attack can make all your savings, all your life savings disappear. What are you talking about here? Where are you rushing to? Customers. Customers are away. That's the problem we have here. In this part of Nigeria, that's the problem in the East. We are so after money that we neglect God. We are so after money that we don't care about the relationship we have with God. This is you. You wake up in the morning. You have never done money devotion. Ah, someone is waiting for you in the market. You are rushing. No knowing that one arrow can what it was one arrow can enter you. All your savings will go down. Am I communicating there? That is why in the morning, before you leave, you must commune with him. Even after my prayers, my study last night, woke up this morning, Elalaba, jump out of the bed, Gidaba, Zigizaga, Kudududagadaba. Why? You must understand that being a pastor, you are standing before principalities of power. Or you think everyone here is a human being? You think everyone here came to worship? Job chapter 1 and verse 1. He said, when the sons of God were coming to present the Lord before the Lord, he said, Satan came also. Satan is no longer the most in the church. So I lifted up my two hands. All to thee, O Lord. Kalabu Shatan. Do I lift up my soul? All to thee, do I live on my soul? Oh, my God. I trust in thee. I trust in thee. Let me not Let not my enemy try There is a battle. There is a battle. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Psalm 23, verse 5. He prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Who were the people there? Who were the people? David was telling God, you, are, you, are, you prepare the table before me in the presence. How can you tell somewhere to anoint me in the presence of my enemy? Who were the people? The brothers. You must, if you want to follow God, follow God where hold God with your life. There are many that have been wasted overnight. Why? Because of their, 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 and the care attitude. They just feel that life is just like that. Someone is after you. If you don't know, I'm telling you. If you must win over the battles of life, you must have that battle consciousness as you wake up in the morning. Understand that you are God's choice. And if you have a dream, there's an enemy to fight. If you have if you have an assignment on your life, if there is a dream, there's an ambition, there's a vision, there is a a a a a, a territorial demon to conquer. He said, that one my battle as and the weapon of war. He said we deal with that break that kingdom and we subdue nations. Am I talking to somebody here? That is why you must not joke with his presence. Take your seat. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the sacred place. Allah Baha Shatter of the Moses shall abound under the shadow. Ika Soba. He 
Tika soba kalala bahashata. A young lady got married and the people came to give her gift. She and her husband traveled to Dubai for honeymoon. They came back. Came back from Dubai. So they were opening their gift. They opened and opened and opened. And she opened one. It was a big carton. Written on the carton. Rest in peace. Immediately she saw it from her waist down. She became paralyzed. Battle! You must be conscious of battle. Marry kingdom. He said we be and we break down and we subdue kingdoms. You think this is your business. All the effort you are putting, nothing is happening. You think it's ordinary. When an enemy becomes your friend, your destiny is finished. That is why you need God. You need God. This world is too wicked for you to think that you don't need God. You need God. And when you are serving, he's serving with sincerity of heart. Follow him with the whole of your heart. Someone is saying, oh, I offend. You don't need to offend them. Oh, what have I done? What are you talking about? In a football field, only a man with a ball becomes the object of attack. Am I speaking here? Once there is a ball on your leg, people must come up. They must come after you. Have you not seen them in the ball, in football field before? Have you ever seen the person go to a, a, a mango and the person is throwing stone and the mango that is not ripe? No one, no one cares about the mango that is all ripe. All around mangoes are trustos. What there is a vision, there is an ambition, there is a dream, there is also an enemy. So be conscious of it. Take your seat. That is why you must not joke with your fellowship with God. As you wake up, Bonanamandeka Sobra Hanila Bahasha. Zigida Bagoda Zega Bagoda Branda Kayasa. Ziga Bago Jagabaga Digaba. O Zagabagina Go Zala Bahata. What are you doing? Say building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Global Impact with Pastor Kingsley Unokoge. Friday, 7:30 p.m. on Celebration TV. The first battle you must encounter in life is the battle for supremacy. The battle for what? Eh? This after supremacy speak of battle for popularity. Battle for superiority. The devil wants to be in charge. God is in charge, but the devil wants to be in charge. There is a fight. One of the major fights you must understand is that the devil wants to be more popular than God. The battle for supremacy. The battle of supremacy speak of a fight for superiority and popularity. The devil is fighting. He wants to be more popular. Isaiah 14 verse 12. To 15. Let's see this fight. Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. May, let, now, everyone look at the scripture. Let's see where this fight started from. He said, How thou, how thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the money. Now, this is the devil he's talking about here. Remember, the devil we refer the person we refer to as Satan, devil today, was Angel Lucifer. Angel Lucifer was what he was formerly in heaven before he left heaven. Now hear what the Bible says. He said, How thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning star, how thou come down to the ground, which did not what? what which did we clean the nations? Go to verse 13. He said, For thou art sent in the heart. Now this is where the battle came from. For thou art sent in the heart, and we are sent into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven. It's above the stars of God. And I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. And I will ascend above the height of the cloud. And I will be like the most high. Now, this was in heaven, though. This was the thought of a Jerusalem. And I will be like the most high. Go to verse 15. Look at the reply of God. Look at, in heaven, Satan planned coup against God. Lucifer planned coup. He said, yet, thou hast been brought down to hell. To the side of the pit. Now, sit down. This was what happened. Bible said in heaven, a Jerusalem discovered one of the secrets that moved God was praise and worship. He observed that any time, because what that, Angel Lucifer, remember, was one of the angels that stood, he was the agent in charge of worship. He 
he was an angel standing before the princess of the Shekinah, day and night. Agent Michael, agent is the agent in charge of fight, battle. He goes out from the princess to fight. Agent Gabriel is an agent of good news. Anytime there's a good news, he goes on assignment. He leaves the presence of God. Now, Agent Lucifer was always in his presence. And that was why he discovered that any time he's admonishing God, he's, he's, he's praising God, he discovered that he sees the beauty of God. So other angels actually could not acknowledge it. They were not aware of what was happening. So Angel Lucifer discovered that one of the things that moved God was his worship. He observed that any time he's praising, he's worshiping God, God moves in the majesty. He, he sees the sovereignty of God. He sees the movement of God. So other angels were not aware. And he said, now, I've seen your secret. Now I discovered this is what your secret. This will move you. I want to be like you. I will dethrone you. I will ascend that be like the Musa. I want to rule the affair of men. I want to be more popular than you. I also need men to worship me. While he conceived this in his heart, God knew. While he was thinking about this, God was aware. God said, I will not allow you to execute this plan. Now, while he was already thinking of this, sir, because a Lucifer was one of the angels that was so popular in heaven, do you know when he left heaven, he didn't leave alone? God saw the heart of a Lucifer and dethroned him. Yes, Bible said there was a fight in heaven. Yes, sir. And Michael fought with him and cast him down. Yes, Even while he was living, he didn't live alone. Yes, sir. Take your seat. He had not even executed his plan. He was, the plan was already inside his heart. He has not executed the plan. And he could live with angels. Just imagine if he has voiced out the plan. The battle of popularity. That is that's the battle we have now. It's a major fight that is going on around the nations of the earth. The devil wants to be in charge. So when he discovered that they cast him down from heaven, he could not rule in heaven. He said, I will take charge of the earth. And I will ensure that the relationship between man and God, I, I spoil it. And we ensure that no one will ever reverence him. And we ensure that that vacant seat that I created in heaven will always be vacant. Remember I told us in this church, how did Mark came into creation? When the seat of a Jerusalem became vacant, in heaven there was a debate. Who will occupy this seat? God beckoned on the Jamaica. He said, in Jamaica, there is something missing. The seat of a Jerusalem is missing. Come and replace him. In Jamaica, said, you know I'm the agent in charge of warfare. I can't function like this. And God said, no problem. He called a Gabriel. Agent Gabriel. There is this seat of a Jerusalem is vacant. Come and replace it. It's a Gabriel said, I'm the angel in charge of good news. I can't function like that. He said, What do I do? Bible said there was a summon in heaven. All the hosts of heaven, the elders, the 24 elders, the angels, the cherubims, there was a meeting. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they all of them came. A meeting was held in heaven. And they said, Let's do. What was it? God called for a meeting. And all the hosts gather. And God said, Okay, I am God by myself. I don't need a man to make me God. Now, a Jerusalem seat is vacant. We must get a replacement. He said, but this replacement will not be with us in heaven. We will put this replacement in charge of the earth. So that as this replacement minister, he will touch the heaven. And he said, let's make man. That was how man came into existence. Man came. And God said, I will not make man. When I was making the Jerusalem I didn't form him. I evoke him. A Jerusalem does not have flesh. It's an angel. It's a spirit. Am I speaking here? He said, now, the person that will occupy, that will replace him, will not be with us in heaven because the person will also discover my secret. They say when a Jerusalem rebel, the person will rebel. If he, if he occupied the seat of a Jerusalem, because a Jerusalem was the angel ministry before God, standing before the hell of him. It's okay, let's make man. A Bible says man was formed. And he says, since the man is going to be in charge of the earth, I will form him with the materials of the earth. Take your seat. He says, since I will put man in charge of the earth, I need to use the earthly materials to make him. But I will put upon him that that can lick him to me. Because if I make him with all the earthly materials, he will not be able to assess me. But the if I can be able to communicate to him, I must give him part of me. And Bible says, God form man. Form man from the dust of the earth. 
Because one man was to be in charge of the earth and he formed man. And when it was done, he breathed it to him. The breath of life. A man became a living soul. I brought him, I put him in the garden. He said, Man, I brought you here so that you may worship me. I will strike a deal with you. I will be coming in the cool of the day every day to worship you. I mean, to have a meeting with you. Every cool of the day, you will render to me what is missing in heaven. You always render the worship. So God was always coming the cool of the day for fellowship with man. Enjoy those things that were missing in heaven. When the jealousy was so that God has gotten a replacement. God was happy. He said, now we spread this relationship. Remember, God has given man instruction. He said, you shall eat of every fruit of the garden, but of this thou shalt not. God saw the fellowship. A man was so crazy about his presence. A man was so concerned about him. And that was always, he was in his presence before God appeared. He was always present in his presence before God's prayer. So God said, now, there is something that is missing. Anytime I come to worship with him, he enjoy me. I take also, he need a company also. Let me get it somebody. So in case I'm not around, let this person be with him to keep it company before my arrival. The Bible said he caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. I brought out if I made a woman. I put him in the garden as a companion, as friendship. So God was always coming down. Adam and Eve started reverence to God. And then Elizabeth said, Now, I know that man is so moved by God. Man is so lovely. He's so after God. Man is consumed by the love of God. But the woman yet, she's not that convinced. The woman see how it's a part of her that I need to work with. So he came as a serpent into the garden. And he asked the woman, he said, what did God tell you? Did God tell you you should not eat of the fruit? He said, yes. God said we should eat of every fruit or of this that shall not. For the day we shall eat, we shall surely die. He said, do you actually know that God was lying? Do you know that God, God knew that the day you shall eat, your eyes shall be open to see good and evil? He knows that the day you shall eat, you shall be like him. And the woman said, what? He said, yes. He said, you will not die, but the day you eat it, you will be like God. Global Impact with Pastor Kingsley Unokoge. Friday, 7.30 p.m. on Celebration TV. So he deceived the woman. He said, okay, God said you should not eat. Is that true? The woman said, yes. He said, but God did not say you should not look. He said, okay, true. God did not say we should not look. You see, you see, you see deception. You see deception. He said, look. So it was always good. When God spoke to Adam, eat of every tree. Don't eat of this. Adam avoided. He ran from the tree. Ran from the tree. And he concentrated on other places. That was why when, when Eve was around the tree, Adam did not know. Do you understand what I'm saying here? When Eve was parabolating, moving around the forbidden fruit, Adam was not aware because when God spoke to Adam, Adam abandoned. He ran, escaped. Dodge right from the tree, the environment of the tree, Adam avoided it. Am I blessing someone here? Take your seat. And the serpent said to Eve, He said, Be moving around. God, he said, Should not move around. Move around the tree. So Eve was always moving around. One time again, the serpent came. He said, You see, God did not say you should not pluck. God only said you should not eat. You can pluck it and not eat it. And Eve said, Ah, it's true. So if pluck, she plucked it. <laughs> he said, now you are plucked, it's already in your hand. God did not say you should not bite. But God said you should not eat. That means you can bite it, but don't eat it. And Eve said, of a truth, God did not say I should not bite. She took the, the, the fruit and bite it. And the Satan came again. He said, God did not say you should not chew. But he said, don't swallow. You can bite, chew, but don't swallow it. And he said, of a truth, did not say you should not chew. So he started chewing the fruit. 
He said, now that you have chewing it, you already, some particles are already inside of you, just better swallow it. As she swallowed, he said, go to your husband. Convince your husband. The greatest weapon of man is a woman. Take your seat. No matter how powerful a man is, if you want to see the witness of a man, bring a woman. Because they were brought out of men. They know the right path to touch. Do you know no matter how stingy a man is, I can't come the man is, there is a woman that is eating this morning. Hello? Hello? And immediately, Adam ate. God came. God came. Why was the devil, what was the devil after? Separation. He was always after that relationship man have with God. He always want to be in charge. He separated them. They drove them. Now take your seat. Sir, there is a battle going on. Understand that the devil is not interested in you worshiping God. The devil wants you to worship him. Are you following me? It's a battle that is going on. How come all the while customers did not come to shop? Now that you are getting ready to go to church, it's now where customer came. And you saw that as God brought customer. This is the devil. That's the work of manipulation. He wants to occupy you, make you busy. Am I speaking to someone here? Sir, you must understand the greatest attack a man can ever go through, not his business, not your marriage, it's your spiritual life. The devil always wants to disconnect you. Hello? The devil is always after the relationship between man and God. The devil is after popularity. The devil wants to be in charge. Am I speaking to someone here? Am I speaking here? The devil is after popularity. Now, that is what I said to us. We are not in the last day. We are in the last moment of the last day. That is why everyone you must understand you need God like never before. You need to be close to God like never before. You need to be, you need to ensure that your relationship with God is, is, is intact. Am I talking to somebody here? That's what's happening now. The battle for supremacy. Battle the devil wants to ensure that you have more followers than God. I bet you, if the trumpet is sad now, I doubt only few will make heaven. The last battle now we talk about is the battle for control. God wants to control man, and they say that the devil wants to control man. The devil always wants to make sure that he's the one controlling you. Am I speaking to someone here? The devil always makes sure he wants to make that was what happened in the Garden of Eden. God put a law. The, the, the devil came and reversed the law. God was controlling man. The devil came and overruled. God, and now the question I want to ask you now is this. Between God and the devil, who is controlling you? Who is really controlling you? Between God and the devil, who are you really serving? Who are you really obeying? Is it God or devil? You know between now, forget about you are saying God. Your ways will show it. Your thought shows it. Your interest shows it. The battles of control. The devil wants to be in charge of your family. The devil is he, he wants to be in control of everything. But my prayer for you is that the devil cannot control you. I said the devil can't control you. He cannot control your family. I wish your amen is louder. So you must fight it. Refuse the devil to control you. Reject him controlling you. Am I speaking to somebody here? That is why anything that is subject, that is why I can someone come to church who don't belong to a group in church. Now between God and the devil is not controlling you. That is why pastor will preach, your mind is preaching something else. God gives you an instruction. The devil came and reversed the instruction. Praise God. You must allow God to be the one to control you. When God is the one controlling you, you can't fail. He's an acknowledging in all that way, he shall direct that path. When God is the one leading you, you can't fail. When God is the one leading you, you can't make mistakes. Am I talking to somebody here? I prophesy upon 138 persons. And the end of this service, God is taking over your control. God is taking over your control. Amen.
He will control your business. He will control your marriage. He will control your academy. What your rest shall fire. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Look at several persons. Tell them God will be the one to control you. God will be the one.